energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, October 20th to Saturday, October 26th. So last week we had Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how we express ourselves, move into Scorpio energy here on the 13th. And so Mercury being in Scorpio energy means that our intellect and our intuition are working together to kind of see some hidden details, some missing pieces of the puzzle, so to speak. We are definitely in detective mode. We are asking all the right kinds of questions, either of ourselves or the people, the world around us in order to get to the truth. Now, we're definitely bringing the past up. We're unearthing a lot of old conversations, old topics, old themes, old ideas that didn't make sense to us at the time in order to gain new perspective, a new level of awareness. And of course, Scorpio energy, very transformative. We have to do the dirty work in order to bring things up, pick things apart, break things down to come to a brand new understanding. Of course, we had the full moon in Aries pop off just here yesterday. If you're tuning in on the 18th, thank you so much for being here. We're still very much in this full moon energy. The full moon in Aries definitely was breakthrough energy. We're still sitting in it. This has a major, major turning point, pivot point with who it is that we are essentially becoming, bringing more of that authentic version of self online. Because this full moon kind of felt more like a new moon, meaning we were very easily to kind of shake off a lot of the heaviness, a lot of the weight that has been really limiting us, really restricting us from moving on. This particular full moon, again, closing the door on the full moon, lunar eclipse and Pisces energy that we've been sitting in since September, definitely bringing new energies, new revelations, new wants, new needs, new desires online. And of course, only hours after that full moon in Aries reached its peak potency, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who was sitting at the 29th critical crisis degree of Scorpio energy through that particular moon event, Venus moved into Sagittarius energy, bringing a lot of fire to the elemental energy profile that, of course, has had major changes as of late. With the fire energy and the air energy now working together, there are going to be moments popping off, bringing huge amounts of clarity, huge amounts of insight online, and also a lot of solutions coming out of the woodwork that, again, we may have been staring at, we just could not see up until now when the eclipse energy finally cleared. So this week, we're moving into Scorpio season. Now, that is both a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing because Scorpio season is a time for us to get real, get raw, get vulnerable with ourselves and actually make the major transition, the major transformations that we've been First of all, hoping and praying for, but also, on the other hand, kind of resisting. Scorpio season is great for shadow work. That should be a good thing. However, most people do not want to do the work. You hear me kind of nagging all the time. Please do the work. Please do the work. Please do the work. People don't want to do their work. They just want to wake up and miraculously be happy and put the past behind them and be cleared out of the negativity and the gunk and the funk that they've been sitting in. But again, you have to do the emotional work. You have to do the energy work. You have to do the mental work. You have to do the trauma work. And of course, Scorpio season is going to be great for those of us that have been doing it because great empowerment energy is coming at us. However, for those that have been sleeping on themselves, you're probably going to have a hard time through Scorpio season. Either way, we're going to be moving through it. And on the 24th, we're going to have the last quarter moon pop off in Leo energy. Of course, the last quarter moon of any lunar cycle is time to wrap things up, to kind of look back and evaluate what is working, what is not, what we want, what we do not want, what we can change, what we do not have the power to change, and of course, kind of in this Leo energy, get our heart right, get back into alignment with our heart space. And of course, that's been a very hard thing to do as of late with the Libra season and the eclipse energy, just preventing us from seeing things clearly and being hella indecisive. So this week, I'm going to say it's going to be a quote unquote calm week. Although the transition from Libra energy into Scorpio energy is going to be a totally different mood, totally different attitude. I feel like some people are going to continue to lose their shit a little bit, especially if you're not willing to do the work. 
With all of that being said, there's definitely going to be some different ascension symptoms that pop off within our physical bodies with these ever-changing energetic landscapes. But before we jump into that, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below, making it a beautiful, very beautiful place to actually be scrolling through. For those of you that are constantly showing me love and support, I want to thank you so much. It is because of you that I continue to do this because, of course, YouTube has totally kicked my channel while it is down. I did talk last week that I was going to, uh, again, kind of put these particular forecasts back on Spotify, back on iTunes, which I have the whole last week of energy reports should be accessible on those particular platforms. And again, if YouTube wants to kick me while I'm down, I'm going to kick back on other platforms. So I just want to thank those of you for your continued love and support. Um, hopefully your continued interactions with this channel will continue to keep me in this algorithm. And hopefully YouTube will kind of, you know, take their foot off of my head, so to speak, and let this information get back in front of the people that have subscribed and literally ask YouTube, hey, I want to see this content. Please stop hiding it from me. It would be really great on my end if I could see an increase in the views on this particular channel. To lose 4,000 views in a short amount of time is just not logical in my brain. There's not 4,000 people that have just dropped off the face of the earth and decided that they no longer want to learn about energy. So for me, uh, kind of taking a look from the you know back end of all the stats here and the algorithms, it just feels a little bit discriminatory. Uh, again, us truthers, we're having a hard go here, but hopefully something kind of shifts, something kind of moves, something kind of gives and we can get back to normal energy boutique channel programming. Let's hope, let's pray. Anywho, I just want to thank those of you that have jumped over to my Patreon, showing me a little bit of love and support over there, definitely making up for the monetary gap that YouTube has created in my life. I appreciate y'all so freaking much. I also want to take a moment and thank those of you that are actually doing the work. Again, I'm going to nag about it. Most people not doing the work. I'll give you an example. I can see how many downloads all the resources that I create and put out there for energy events, such as the moon, all of the full moons, all of the new moons. There's a moon guide for every event. I can see all of the guides, the resources that I put out specifically on my Patreon. I have like 200 people on my Patreon and like six people are doing the work. I can see the downloads. I can see the interactions. And people ask me, I, I don't think it was a, last week. I think it was the week before. Like, how do I know that the collective, you know, is not doing the work? Well, because I can see it. I can see the, the resources that people are paying for, but yet they don't even open. They don't even download. I can see the amount of people that are interested in listening to the forecast and interested and understanding how those energies are actually individually impacting their lives, I can see it. And the decline, not only in the numbers, but the interest, the interactions, the amount of downloads that are taking place from all the different platforms. I mean, huge indicator, people are jumping off the wagon. They're tired of this. They don't want to continue to do the work. They don't see the point in it. And I understand that frustration. Trust me, I'm on a different spectrum, you know, this end trying to kind of lead a horse to water, so to speak, but yet I can't make that freaking horse drink. And it's very frustrating, but I'm going to continue to thank those of you that are continuing to show up, are continuing to do the work. Thank you so much for doing that. The collective and future humanity definitely thanks you. But we definitely need more people back on the wagon, back into investing in themselves, and maybe, just maybe, the darkness of the shadow work that is going to be triggering and activating people through Scorpio season will have them coming back to these resources, back to the investment that they should be making within themselves. We shall see. Anyhow, let's jump into the ascension symptoms for this week. First of all, there's going to be a rise. I know we've been kind of, you know, dealing with these heart activations and especially when Venus was transiting through Scorpio energy, like the heart activations, the grief, the sadness, the anxiety, the weight was very, very harsh. 
now in Sag energy, it is a fire sign. There's a lot more optimism there. There's a lot more, I'm going to call it exploration and experimentation energy there. But it is a fire sign. And because of that, there's going to be a lot of heartburn, a lot of acid reflux, a lot of pain, a lot of bubble guts right below our rib cage. That is where our solar plexus is. We're going through a major, major change and transformation of self. And again, I'm going to continue to repeat myself here. The further away that we get from this eclipse energy, because again, we're still under the influence of the new moon solar eclipse in Libra up until November 1st, when we have the new moon in Scorpio pop off. And so we are still being eclipsed, which means, you know, um, hidden from a certain perspective, a certain truth, certain information, certain details that again are going to help inform us to a point where we're going to be able to make better decisions, better choices, better options, let's say, for our path and moving forward. But the heartburn is definitely going to be a real thing. Even, you know, the bubble guts, I know our digestion always takes a hit when we are changing energies. And that's just because, again, our central nervous system kind of dictates how we channel these energies. And, you know, our digestive system has so many freaking nerves in it that we kind of are constantly in fluctuation with our diet, with our foods, with the reactions to said foods and diet. Um, and a lot of the time when we are shifting in the elemental energy profile, again, when the seasons change, when transits are taking place and we move into different elemental energies, that is a totally different vibe. And we, for the most part, have been in air and water energies. There's been a lot of earth energies as well. We've been lacking fire, mostly because, again, fire is action. We haven't been in action mode and having Venus now in a fire energy where we're taking action to push the boundaries of our physical realms to see where it is that we can make changes and improvements and adjustments to our overall lifestyle, to our happiness, to our joy, to our safety, security, stability, to our relationship dynamics, to our money matters, to our future goals. We are in an action point in the Sag energy to kind of, well, first of all, it's going to be very hard to focus on one thing because the, the Sag energy is very scattered, but nonetheless, we are out in the world. We are light and fluffier. We are wanting to have a little bit more fun. We are pushing the boundaries of what once was, and we are open to experiment with seeing what we could do, what we can improve, what we can adjust, what we can change in order to make our heart a little bit more happy. With that fire energy, though, comes with fire Let's call them symptoms, which is heartburn, which is acid reflux, which is that bubble guts, that pressure underneath the rib cage. Now, I think it was last week we talked about how that weird sensation, like when you sit down and your your ribs just feel like they're like on top of each other or clicking together or just something feels weird in that rib cage issue. That is likely going to I'm going to I'm just going to say pop up every now and then with the amount of energy, the amount of air, the amount of fluid, the amount of contents that we are holding on to in our gut, in our digestive tract. And so, you know, that's the reason for some of these heartburn, acid flux, bubble guts symptoms. There is going to be an intensity an inflammation, if you will, underneath our rib cage. Now, that is going to span to the back, especially between the shoulder blades. It's going to feel like you need to crack those particular bones in your spine, and it's going to feel like there's like a bubble or something kind of digging into your back. That, again, is a heart activation. There is a lot of, let's call it past issues, past emotions, past pain, past trauma coming up for review. And because we're operating from a new lens, because we're operating from a new level of awareness and consciousness, we're going to be able to rapidly process a lot of the situations and circumstances that we were too close to in order to see the deeper meaning to as well. And again, with Sag energy that Venus is currently in, we're looking for truth. We're looking for depth. We're looking for meaning. We're looking to expand upon certain situations and circumstances that, again, we have to kind of grow into and evolve with in order to have a good look back and say, you know what, as crappy as that was, I'm glad that it happened because it meant that I am here now doing this, you know, either with these people or this, you know, situation or circumstance, whatever the case may be, it's going to be different for all of us. Um, but we're starting to kind of, you know, put the pieces together and see where it is that we're actually coming full circle. 
So there's going to be, you know, this heart activation, but also there's this lung situation as well. We have been in Libra season. There's been a lot of air. And because there's been a lot of air, our throat, our skin has been very dried out. We were having, I'm going to say, a restriction on the amount of air that we've been able to bring into the physical body, able to bring into the lungs. Again, not being able to have that deep sense of relief with a deep breath being taken. Again, we're kind of limited, shallow in our breathing in that air season. And once we move into Scorpio energy, of course, we're diving into the water. So just think of, you know, climbing up this huge ladder to this diving board. Okay, that's the air, air energy. We were all the way up there. We had a totally different perspective. And of course, in the Libra energy, we were at the tip of that diving board. And we're saying, Oh, my goodness, am I going to jump? No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Again, the indecisiveness of Libra energy kind of just had us standing on that very elevated platform, kind of taking it all in, psyching ourselves up and then out from doing what it is that, again, we initially cl climbed all the way up there in order to do. Well, when we reach this last final degree, and again, we're moving into Scorpio energy here on the 22nd, it's almost as if we get pushed by the universe. We get pushed off of this diving board. Now we're free falling. And the minute that we hit that water, first of all, let's hope that we don't, you know, body splat on it because that hurts. But if we can kind of get our shit together while we're free falling throughout this particular air energy at the final degrees and we dive into this water, we're going to the great big depths of this particular pool, ocean, pond, whatever it is that we're diving into. And of course, we have to take a deep, deep, deep breath of air before we enter into that water. But the pressure of that water on our physical body, of course, when you are coming to the surface of the water, you're gasping for air. You know, you're out of breath. You need that air. And then when you breathe that air in, suddenly we're kind of operating at a level of fullness in our lungs that we haven't been operating in. So it is quite an adjustment. And what happens? We start choking. We start choking. Hopefully we don't start choking and coughing to the point where we, you know, start choking on the water that we're now taking into our lungs. But at the same time, the ascension energy that is going to be really manifesting in the lungs is going to help us kind of cough up and out a lot of the restriction, a lot of the gunk, a lot of the weight that we've been holding on to in our chest space. And again, just take a review over the last month, many of us were really biting our tongues, really wanting to unleash a lot of truth and get a lot of things out of our body and off of our heart space. But we've been biting our tongue about it because of course, Libra energy, nobody wants to rock the boat. Nobody wants to be the bad guy. Well, those days are over once we're moving into Scorpio season. First of all, Mercury's already in Scorpio. So we're just analyzing the crap out of old conversations, out of old situations and circumstances. We're trying to shift our mental plane, shift our heart space to get them in alignment so that we are in alignment with our truth. And we are going to start spitting our truth here very freaking shortly. You cannot get any more honest, any more authentic, any more deep, any more intense than Scorpio energy. And once we move into that Scorpio energy, there are going to be situations and circumstances where you're finally going to be able to get some things off of your chest, so to speak. And when you alleviate that kind of emotion, that kind of energetic weight off of your heart space, there's going to be this ability to be able to breathe a little bit deeper. There's going to be this aspect where there, if there is kind of, you know, you're choking on your words or you're having a hard time getting your truth out, there are going to be coughing fits. There is going to be phlegm that gets coughed up, especially if you start choking on your emotions, right? That's what water energy is. It's emotions. That's why people hate Scorpio energy because you have to do the shadow work to unpack the heavier thoughts and emotions that are existent still in your egoic programming and conditioning that have you operating out of your unconscious self that essentially you piece together within the first seven years of your experience. So we're just a bunch of adults walking around with a seven-year-old mind frame. Basically, anything that you observe, the way that you calculated who is safe, what is safe, who is not, what is not, the way that you took in the world, the way that you understood yourself in proximity to the people around you within the first seven years of your life, that is the programming that you're still operating on. That is still the pain and trauma wounds that you are still making choices and decisions out of. And that's why we do the work in order to destabilize the power that the ego programming over the physical body has 
and we empower the soul self to take power and control over the physical body so that we're not operating unconsciously. We're operating with awareness, with consciousness, with intent. So to say that things aren't going to be intense, that is going to be a lie. Things are going to be hella intense. That's what Scorpio energy is all about. Just a reminder, we have Scorpio energy that is basically represented with three different animal totems, which is the only sign of the Zodiac that does that. We have different levels of awareness in the Scorpio energy. And so, you know, Scorpion, we have the Eagle, and then we have the Phoenix. So the scorpion, of course, is the lower level of the intellect in defense and protective mode, willing to strike and kill if we are put in situations to be killed by others. The eagle, of course, takes flight, gives us a bigger, broader perspective. That's when we're actually elevating in our consciousness, looking down on the Scorpio and seeing that that scorpion is actually in defense mode, actually in preservation mode, acting out of survival mode. The eagle, of course, has a different level of awareness, has a different ability to fly out of that lower level of the intellect and actually see things from the greater, grander perspective. And then, of course, there's the phoenix, who, of course, gets burned by all of the pain, all of the trauma, ends up as a pile of ash and then resurrects itself as the phoenix. And of course, what can the phoenix do? Well, it can burn you, it can hurt you, it can harm you. It's also able to fly way higher than the eagle ever could. And the phoenix is the resurrection energy that Scorpio sees in lends each and every single one of us. But in order to renew yourself, in order to be reborn, in order to be resurrected, something has to die. That is why Scorpio energy is about death and destruction. In order for a resurrection, a true renewal, a true rebirth, a true transformation to actually take place. And it is happening in our soul, in our spirit, due to the emotions that we are either A, willing to dive into, to unpack, to unearth in order to be better and do better, or B, that we are willing to avoid, we are willing to fight against, and therefore continue to stay in that unconscious realm of egoic programming and conditioning. I definitely don't recommend that. So new insights are going to come online. New realizations are coming online. Suddenly, we are going to be looking at things and being like, damn, how did I not see that? Jeez, that was right in my face. How did I not notice that? We're going to have situations where we're going to be saying, oh, that makes so much sense. Why? Because we're moving out of the veil of eclipse energy. Scorpio season is the sign that bridges the gap between the ego realm and the spiritual realm. And we have one foot in both realms, so to speak. We, we started off again in Libra energy with the scales, one scale being in the physical realm and, you know, the other scale kind of trying to help us tip in the spiritual realm section. Scorpio energy, we're fully immersed in this energetic, unconscious, emotional realm, but there's still that footing that many of us are desperately holding on to, to stay in this egoic realm of operation. And the ego realm is operating off of the pain and trauma wounds. It is a survival program. If you look at the physical body and you look at the way that the mind works to operate the physical body, that is all a survival programming. But we've kind of gotten to the point where we don't want to survive anymore. We want to thrive. Well, you can't thrive under the guise of your ego programming. In order to thrive, you have to align with your spiritual self. And this is what, you know, Scorpio season, why people hate it, why people dread it, because it forces you to take a good look at yourself, forces you to take a good look at what you're choosing. It forces you to take a good look at the uglier parts of self and to do the work to integrate those particular parts of self that, so that you're operating from a completed sense of wholeness instead of a fragmented soul a fragmented ego, a fragmented mind. So there's going to be new clarity. And we've been hoping and praying for clarity. But that funny thing about clarity is that people want it to come in these beautiful aha moments, these beautiful epiphanies where suddenly everything makes sense. And more often times than not, especially in Scorpio season, you're going to gain the clarity that you need by the tension by the conflict, by shit hitting the fans so that you realize that guess what? You can't continue to go this path or else it's going to be back-to-back -back conflict, back-to-back struggle. 
there's going to be a new level of awareness coming out of the problematic areas that you can no longer continue to connect yourself with. And that, again, is another reason why people dislike Scorpio season. We want to talk about the fact that things are going to get a little bit brighter. Now, does that mean more positive? That depends on you. Again, you have the ability to take a good look at the world and choose whether or not you want to see it from a negative or a positive lens. You have the choice to have an optimistic or pessimistic type of lens. You have the choice, even looking at the uglier people, the uglier parts of this human experience to either let that get you down, let that make you angry, let that get you frustrated, let that get you fearful, or you can understand that it is part of the experience that the collective designed in order for us to see all parts of self, all parts of God, all parts of consciousness. And again, if you're still finding yourself in a polarized perception of experiences, meaning you look at things like, oh, that is good and that is bad, or that is new or that is old, that is polarization. That is a dualistic type of perception that the human experience on this earth plane allows us to see, but we should be operating from the soul and spirit self, understanding that there is no good and bad, there just is, that there is no old and new, there just is present, right? So when you understand, I'm going to have a whole hell of a lot of people that are like, no, the evil doers doing the horrible things in the world, that is bad. Okay, well, then you're still operating from the egoic programming, right? When you understand that we came here in order to explore every faucet, every aspect of what it means to be quote unquote good or bad, and you understand that the bad only exists because there's good in the world to compare it to and vice versa, then you understand that it is merely but an experience that humanity has chosen to have in order to, again, bridge the gap between quote unquote good and bad and to understand that there are, I'm going to say, possibilities of existence when we turn a blind eye, when we don't want to do the work, when we don't want to confront those particular issues. And so that's why, like, for the most part, I try not to even talk about the good or the bad or the evildoers or the whatever anymore, because there are very few people that are actually at the, I'm going to call it level of awareness to understand that what we're experiencing here on the earth plane, we all agreed to experience that we needed to create what you would consider bad people in order to understand what good and what light actually is. It is all a part of the process. We are all here playing a role, playing a part for us to have the experience that quote unquote, God creator energy fragmented and individualized himself in him slash herself. Cause it's not a him or her thing. Anywho, um, in order for us to come here as individuals and have this individualized experience so that when we, we return to source, we kind of debrief and give our situation, our circumstances, what we experience when all of those pieces come together, the God creator energy can say, you know what? I've experienced every single variable that I could possibly experience here on this earth plane. That is all this is. Okay. And so again, I'm going to remind you, you have the ability to flip the script in your head at any given moment. You have the ability to flip the script on any emotion that you're experiencing at any given moment. You have the ability to reframe any given situation and circumstance at any given moment. The choice is yours, okay? So when I say brightness, people are like, oh, positivity. Oh, everything is gonna be rainbows and butterflies again. Well, if you want to choose to see it from that lens, yeah, you can have that that experience at any given time. When I say brightness, I mean that there is a vividness that is now coming back into our sensory experience, meaning when we gain clarity, what happens? Well, we've been dealing with uh, non-clarity, let's call it, and we have had nothing but problematic issues with our eyes, okay? When clarity happens, we have issues with our eyes not being able to adjust to the brightness of the colors, the brightness of the smells, the brightness of the sensory situations and circumstances that we're now bringing in. Our central nervous system has upgraded and we will continue to go through this upgrading of our programming through Scorpio season. That's what it is, a transformation of soul and spirit. 
So the brightness that I'm talking about, sure, it could come with a new moon, a new attitude. Sure, it could be positive. Sure, it could be fun. That's up to you. You can have that at any moment. You don't have to wait for a season to have that. But the brightness in which I'm talking about is that when you take our central nervous system, our sensory uh, input system, taking all the information, details and data from the world, from the environment around us, that volume button is getting turned all the way up, especially in Scorpio season. Why? Because Scorpio season teaches us that we have to be in touch and connected to the intangible, meaning our soul, our spirit, energy, intuition, all the things that you can't put into form, all the things that, again, you can't put your finger on that you can't have receipts or pr proof or evidence of. It literally is opening up our sensory system to the light spectrum, the sound spectrum, uh, to a greater vicinity, if you will, of us being able to pick up on the subtle energies of the world that overlays our physical realm. So this is why people lose their shit. They start seeing things, they can't handle the new sensory inputs, um, you know, there's a lot going on there. And considering the fact that Scorpio energy is very intuitive, very in touch with the other dimensions, the other realms, um, that kind of jolts people. And so, you know, we're in, we're in the time, we're in the chapter of spiritual psychosis. Again, Saturn and Pisces, thank you for that. Um, but we definitely expect there to be a rise in mental health issues in that spiritual psychosis type of situation and circumstance through Scorpio season, especially for those information junkies out there that are taking all the information in, but not doing anything to integrate that information to put it into practice to ground themselves to do what they need to do in order to strengthen the physical vessel in order to be able to house the kind of energy inputs that of course, our central nervous system is trying to adapt us to. So there's going to be a lot of intensity there. The case of just knowing really takes over in Scorpio season, you know, in Libra season, we're all up in the head space, we're trying to align the head space with the heart space. But there's a lot of thinking involved, a lot of weighing the pros and cons trying to get those scales to balance. We're all up in the head space. And when you're in the head space, you're out of the heart space. And what do I mean by that? You can't think your way through intuition. You can't intellectualize something that you just know in your gut. There are certain situations and circumstances where you can make a list on paper and it all looks good on paper and it makes a lot of logical and practical sense, but it just doesn't feel good. And when it doesn't feel good, then you come down to do you trust your gut or do you trust your mind? And if you trust your mind, you are leaning into the egoic programming. And if you trust your gut, you're living in the soul and spiritual realm. And the amount of people that live in their headspace here in today's world is just alarming. You cannot be in alignment with your intuition if you think your way through life. It just cannot happen. So, you know, oftentimes when I say, oh, there's going to be new realizations today, there's going to be new epiphanies today. People literally are sitting around thinking, oh, is this an epiphany? Oh, this just happened. Is this is this the realization that I'm supposed to have? You've already lost the game. Okay, you've already missed the lesson. You've already failed the test. An epiphany, a realization is like this aha moment, the spark that comes out of nowhere. It doesn't come out of intentional thinking processes. It's like you're washing the dishes and you're not even thinking about whatever it is that just suddenly pops into your mind and you have a visual and you're like, oh, damn, that makes so much sense. That's exactly what I need to do. I have to look into that. Okay, so when things come just out of the blue, when you're actively not intellectually trying to think of a solution and you're doing something, and typically speaking, it's when you keep the physical body busy and mundane tasks and chores on autopilot, that is when moments of brilliance come in. Brilliance is not thinking. If you come to a solution, if you come to a idea through the thought process, that is your intellectual ego self. That is not your intuitive self. And there are so many people that just don't seem to understand that, which means that the majority of the collective is still, again, giving too much power to the ego programming. And so, again, we have to stop thinking, start feeling. Everybody wants to run away from their emotions when you understand that your emotions, first of all, we, we incarnate 
here on the earth plane as human beings, because we're the only beings that actually have a full range of emotions. We're the only beings that have two completely opposite programmings fighting each other for power and for rulership. And the whole point as a human being is to have power and control over your emotions. Your emotions are your greatest asset when most people look at them as a weakness, as a vulnerability. When your emotions control you, that is not a good thing. That's why we do the work. That's why we have to boss up. That's why we do the shadow work to have control over our emotions. If you, if your emotions have control over you, you're going to lose every time. If your headspace is not strong enough, you are going to be a victim to your inner dialogue, to the impact of your intellect every time. The whole point of being here is to empower yourself, be so strong in your soul and spirit that you can walk that fine line between the egoic programming and the soul programming. You can walk that fine line between your intellect and your actual thought process, your inner dialogue, your narrative. Walk that line between your emotions and understanding what those emotions are trying to teach you. And so this is a place, a school that we come to to master all of these things. But especially in Scorpio season, we're going to have everybody jumping off the wagon, going and curling up in a ball, trying to sit this one out. And what are they doing? They're avoiding the work. They're avoiding their emotions. They're avoiding what they need to do to master them own damn selves. When we've been talking about the North Node and specifically Chiron in this Aries energy, trying to bring this new version of self online, the heightened version of self, the uh, intuitive self, the soul self. This whole point has been to activate our creator abilities. You can only activate those creator abilities when you've mastered having the power and control over your mental plane and over your heart space, your emotions. And so again, there are huge, huge groups of people that are going to run and hide from this particular chapter, this particular, let's call it class or um, exam in order for us to be truly empowered. We have to remember that Sagittarius energy awaits us after we get through Scorpio season. And people want truth and they want happiness and they want freedom and they want independence and they want to have a good time. Well, that is Sag energy, but you only get to Sag energy by going through the dark parts, going through the struggle, going through the test, going through the exams to see whether or not you are going to master your heart and your head or you're going to allow your heart and your head to master you. This is a time of mastery. Take a look at how many placements we have at the final degrees of their respective signs. Take a good look at how many ending and closure chapters we have going on right now. Take a good look at the indicators that this is a time of self mastery. You have to get to know thyself in order to heal thyself in order to stand in the power of thyself operating as your authentic self, bringing those creator abilities online. We have a huge test ahead of us here in the Scorpio season, and I welcome you to rise to the challenge. So with this particular knowing, with this sense of knowing what to do, especially, you know, if you've been debating in your mental plane through Libra season, should I do this? Should I do that? You're just going to wake up one day and you're going to know and you're not going to have any receipts or any proof or any evidence to back up why you know what you know. And it may not make logical, practical sense on paper, because, again, it's a spiritual calling, right? If if this was a physical calling, somebody would pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, here's a good idea. Maybe you should do it. We don't get that with a spiritual calling. We get this nagging, this voice, this this impulse, this pull, if you will, to do things that, again, aren't our norm, that may not make logical and practical sense, but we know we just have to do it. We just know. So there is going to be this knowing. There's also going to be this I've had it energy or F it energy. Now, that's a good thing. Why? Well, first of all, because the, you know, the weeble wobble, but we don't fall down the teeter totter, the back and forth, the ebb and flow that we've been going through in Libra season, it, we've had about enough, right? So we've been trying to not rock the boat in Scorpio season. We don't care about rocking the boat. We're going to flip this whole damn thing over. And guess what? We're going to fight you in order to actually be on top of this boat and save ourselves from drowning. We do not give an F about 
not rocking the boat. In fact, we are about intensity. We are about change. We are about transformation. The only way that you can make any changes is if you reach a breaking point. What better breaking point to reach than finally saying F it about something that is totally consumed, your heart and your head, your total in being, your total attention for far too long. So reaching an F it point is definitely going to help us pivot, start kind of getting out of our own damn way and doing what we have to do to make the adjustments, to make the changes, to make the transformations that, again, we've been resistant in making. It's a little bit of an oxymoronic thing, seeing as Scorpio season is a fixed sign. Fixed energies don't like to make change. We're not supposed to be making change. We're supposed to be stabilizing from the changes that come at us through the cardinal seasons. Again, we're coming out of a cardinal season here in Libra energy, which is the initiator energy to make change, to initiate a new path. But again, we've been held back, restricted, and eclipsed from doing so because of the eclipse season that took place. In, inside of Libra season. So we have like a double whammy coming at us where again, we don't really want to make the changes where everything in us is saying resist those changes, but that's the egoic programming. And if you can override that egoic programming, listen to what it is that you know, from your heart, from your soul, from your spirit, you are going to reach an effort situation and circumstance, a pivot point and you are going to flip tables, you're going to flip boats, you're going to throw people out of the boat, you're going to rock the boat, you're going to shake things up and shake things down in order for the changes to actually take place. That's where we're going to be at. That's what we're going to be comfortable in doing. It's very intense. There has to be a death, an ending, a closure in order for a beginning, a birth, a resurrection to actually take place. And this is when it is going to happen. We are going to be operating as our more authentic, empowered self. That's just what happens. That is just what happens when you get rid of the fake facade that we've all been living in and under in this Libra season. We drop the mask. We don't care about how it looks. We don't care about anything to do that we were overly consumed with in Libra season. Again, we throw the scales right out the window. We don't care about the scales anymore. Scorpio energy, we know life isn't fair. We know that there is not going to be a point where everybody is going to be happy. Everybody's going to get along. But what we do need to do is make sure that we are acting from our own authentic self, speaking our truth, doing what is best for us. And again, kind of kicking ass and taking names if I say so myself, right? We do not seem to hesitate when we need to do what we need to do in order for happiness, stability, fairness, joy to actually be something that we could achieve. The Scorpio energy is the major change and transformation that again, we've been trying to hide behind. We've been trying to mask that we can't hide from that we can't mask any longer. So like I previously mentioned, if you've been doing the work, this is going to be a great time of empowerment of change of transformation for you. If you haven't been doing the work, you may as well put your energetic helmet and your elbow and your knee pads on because you're about to get dragged, my friend. And that is on you. If you continue to run away from yourself, if you continue to sweep things under the rug, if you continue to avoid doing the work within yourself that you know that you need to be doing, then you, my friend, are going to get dragged through this whole damn season. And I do have a little tiny bit of empathy uh, for those particular people, but not a whole hell of a lot. Because again, us doing the work, why are we going to continue to be sad? Why are we going to continue to empathize? with people that have the same options, the same opportunities, and in some cases, better options and opportunities than we've had that refuse to boss up, that refuse to do the work, that refuse to take accountability and responsibility over their own damn lives, and that just continue to run away and to complain about their lives when realistically they do nothing to change it. So you can only extend so much empathy for those types of people. It's time to shit or get off the pot. I'm going to leave this particular forecast there. I think that's a good way to summarize it. Good way to wrap this up. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you for showing up for me, but mostly I thank you for showing up for your own damn self. Thank you for doing the work. Lean all the way into it. Please do not run. Please do not hide. It's time to boss up. Face the facts and definitely gauge where it is that you can do better. And therefore you're required to be better. I'm sending you nothing but love. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>